Good morning, and welcome to Bendale Bible Chapel on this Palm Sunday. With all that's going on in the world, sometimes it's hard to remember what day of the week it is, let alone that it is Palm Sunday. So let's start our service by focusing our thoughts by reading Matthew 21. And this is a passage that talks about the very first Palm Sunday, Jesus' triumphant entry. We're going to look at verses 1 to 9 from Matthew 21. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I'd invite you to join us and sing at home along with us as we sing, Filled with Your Glory, followed by Hosanna, Praise is Rising.
We have a couple of announcements this morning. First of all, I'd like to remind parents and youth that today at one o'clock, the classes in the attic will be meeting using Zoom. I send invitations to all youth and or their parents. This will give you time to have lunch and then join us for about 15 minutes uh, even though the meeting on Zoom could go as long as 45 minutes. I thought this would be a good way for us as teachers to be able to say hello and to find out how everyone is doing. And although I usually could teach for 45 minutes, I plan to do a very brief five-minute lesson and hope it will encourage the youth. Also, some people have been asking how to give financially to Bendale during this time when we cannot meet since Bendale's financial obligations continue. Most of you received an email with instructions for Interact e-transfers using the email address donate at bendale.com. The address has been registered for auto deposits, so security questions are not needed when making a payment. Funds received via e-transfer will have tax, income tax receipts issued in the same manner as if you had given funds during the offering on a Sunday morning. The process to set up e-transfers varies from bank to bank, so please speak with your banks online or telephone support if you need help setting it up. For those who prefer to support Bendel using checks, you may do so by mailing them to the church. They will be collected and periodically deposited at the bank, though not with the same frequency as in normal circumstances. Please do not send cash to the church. Just before we look at our prayer announcements, um, I would just like to suggest that people may want to start keeping a thankful or gratitude journal during this time. I know a few years ago when uh, Crystal Whiston was chairing, she suggested that. I found that very helpful at the time and uh, started doing one again with a journal that Kellyanne had given me and it seemed like a good time to, to start one. Uh, even articles from uh, secular sources as well as religious sources have talked recently about the, the positive uh, benefits of expressing gratitude even at this time. Uh, let's look at our prayer requests. And uh, first of all, Peggy Graham, we'd like to uh, be, thank God that her surgery took place so quickly last Wednesday and that they believe they got all the cancer. Please continue to pray for complete healing. For Doreen Beer and family, Dr. Norm Beer passed peacefully into the Lord's presence on March 26. Please continue to pray for peace and comfort for Doreen and the family. For Bob and Carol Morris, Bob's cancer is spread to his brain. They moved him to a condo uh, rather than staying in palliative care at Markham Stouffville Hospital because they wouldn't allow visitors any longer. So Carol and his son Jonathan are looking after him at the condo. For Marge Robinson, she's able to take a few steps with assistance, continue to pray for strength and peace. For Darlene McCaldin, the test results showed no lung cancer, pray for relief from severe pain. For Nina's son Terry, the liver cancer has metastasized. He hopes to start chemo again soon. Please pray for healing. Also for Chuck's stepdad, Graydon, for healing from lung cancer. For Joanne Richardson, for full recovery from successful knee replacement surgery. She appreciates your prayers and is coming along slowly. For Jerry Vleer, for improvement in memory, which has not been good since the stroke and seizures. And for Keith Sakaguchi, for strength and pain relief from arthritis in his hands and back. Uh, let us pray. Lord, we bring these loved ones to you and others that we hold privately in our hearts, asking you to heal those who are sick and to bring comfort and peace to those who are grieving. We pray that in your mercy you will put an end to the virus and its devastation. We ask you to heal those currently with the virus, to comfort those who have lost loved ones, Give wisdom to our world leaders and a spirit of obedience to all citizens. Give courage to the essential service workers and their families. Encourage those who are fearful or depressed. May your word go forth powerfully in new ways that many will come to know you and that each of us will become stronger in our relationship with you, making every effort to make disciples who make disciples. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join us in singing canons, followed by My Heart is Stirred.
Today's scripture reading is found in Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 18. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation, in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. May God add his blessing to his word.